Okay, our next presentation is the double act. So, um, I still don't know how it works. The first one comes and then the middle, someone else comes and then again, I think Andrew comes yeah. and finish it off. Okay, so we, we've heard about the dance. Now this one is about the dancing dictionary, whatever it means. Please. Okay, so the main focus of this presentation is the consultancy work we did on the Puma Dance Dictionary project. But I'll just begin with some background on, on who we are and how the project came about. So we're from the um, Research and Development Unit for English Studies within the School of English. I'm Andrew, the unit director, and Matt is a software developer. And our main research field is in corpus linguistics, which is basically the study of large collections of electronic texts to discover new facts about the English language. And over the years, we've worked on a series of externally funded research projects, um, developing software to test kind of hypotheses about different aspects of language use. So we've looked at things like neologism detection or new words, document similarity, and our most recent project has been the eMargin um, collaborative annotation tool. Um, but our biggest success over the years has been the WebCorp project which, where we developed our own large-scale web search engine for linguistic study. So we developed tools to allow us to crawl the web and download texts and index them. And we built a 10 billion word collection of web texts, which also includes sub-collections for different research interests. So there's newspapers and blogs and literature, for example. And the idea is to let users search for examples of words or phrases in context and to monitor language change across time. So this was kind of the background knowledge and software that we brought to the consultancy work that we did. The project itself was on behalf of an advertising agency, Grey London, who were working on the, well, the Puma Dance Dictionary project. It was designed as part of the launch for the new Puma Sync range of fragrances, which were actually man manufactured by Procter & Gamble under license from Puma. Um, one thing we didn't advise them on was the name. Um, if we had done, we would have told them that sink sounds too much like stink, and also a kitchen sink full of dishwater. But anyway, that was already decided before we started. What the actual brief was, was the product was aimed at consumers aged 14 to 25, and it was based around um, social media messaging. So the idea was that users could enter a message to a friend and it would then be translated into videos of dance moves, which could be sent through social media. Um, one constraint was that the budget allowed only up to 200 videos to be filmed, so they wanted to know which language they should focus on for those, those 200 videos. The specific linguistic brief was to, well, to devise a list of the words most typically used in social media and to be able to group together related words so they could use the same video for more than one word. So the example they gave us for example was um, the group would be fast and it would include words like fast, quick, hurry and whiz. Well this diagram is what they also provided us with the initial stages uh, to show us the kind of how it would work. The idea was that the user would enter a message and then it would automatically pick out the most important words, in this case um, party and wild and then it would look at its list of videos and find the most appropriate video to show based on the groups of words. So in this case, wild is grouped with crazy and party and various other words. And then it shows the video for that group. So that was the basic linguistic brief, but now Matt's going to tell you how we went about achieving this. Okay, so our, um, our approach when we do any of this work is to base it on real-world data, real-world language use. So the first thing we needed to do was collect data from Twitter and the blogs to use in this. Um, so we used the firehose feature of the Twitter API, which gave us a random stream of tweets and tried to limit them to English as best we could. And we used the blog corpus, which we built for um, previous um, projects using our WebCorp technology. <coughs> and we put those together into a social media corpus, which is a collection of texts. Um, and so this started off with 4.7 million unique words, which is a huge amount. We reduced that down to uh, 50,000 unique words, um, based on them having a frequency of one, more than one per um, one million words. But this is still a lot of data to, uh, to work through and we wanted to determine which out of all of this was sort of most important to the, uh, the social media data. So for that we turned to, um, 
to a keywords technique which is used in corpus linguistics um, where keywords are automatically extracted from the text um, by comparing them against a baseline corpus. So the baseline was our generic web corpus from the web corp system which is made up of 10 billion words. And, um, and by comparing the social media corpus against that, uh, we can sort of determine which of these words are more sort of relevant to, the, to social media. Um, and it's based on comparing the different frequencies in the different corpora of all of the words and using a statistical measure which also takes into account the relative sizes of the two collections. Um, and the kind of output that we get is a list of words ranked by how key they are in social media. So you can see that there are a few here based on the technology like RT for retweet, Twitter and follow. Um, and there are some that you wouldn't find in a standard dictionary like LOL and OMG, LMAO, ha ha ha. Um, and, uh, and also th through uh, further analysis um, we can find words that might be used differently to how you would find them in, uh, in other collections. So you might be aware that the word sick has had a, a change in meaning recently, a new meaning has sort of developed around it. And there are many manifestations of the meaning of sick in the, da in the data, such as the first group, which is related to, a, to illness or throwing up, like a child being violently sick on the cross-country hell. <laughs> or, um, or the second group, which is to do with being frustrated or being disgusted at someone. Um, the third group is related to the newer meaning, which is something that is cool or wicked, like what I did in baseball was sick. I just found a sick new website. Um, and you can see the, the last meaning, and perhaps 14 as well, are, um, are quite ambiguous in their meaning. They could relate to the cool meaning, or they could relate to um, being sort of disturbed by something. Um, and, uh, and just uh, another example for um, words which haven't appeared in in previous collections, such as hench. <laughs> Two minutes, okay. Um, so, uh, so here we use the context to determine what the word means, and we've also highlighted some words here, so we can automatically search for words which appear in multiple contexts and use that as an indicator for what the word means. And you can see it means working out, it's a muscular body shape or being attractive. And so when we categorised the results, it went in the attractive category in the top left there. Um, and you can see there's a, a few examples of the words that we put in the categories. The categories were much bigger than this by the time we'd finished. Um, and you can see there's a slightly more grammatical one with intensifiers in there. And I will leave those on the screens. I hand back to Andrew. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so once we had the groups of words, they were sent to a choreographer called Super Dave. Unfortunately, we never met Super Dave. I don't know why he's super, but anyway. And then filming took place in LA with some freestyle dancers and in the meantime the advertising agency came up with this website, um, pumadancedictionary.com and this is also the messaging platform. So once you press the get started link you're presented with a list of sentences to choose from. This is one change from the original plan. Originally they wanted to be able to, well, the users to be able to write anything they wanted so just free text messages. Um, they soon realised, based on the advice that we gave them, that language was too open-ended and variable to allow that kind of thing. So, in the end, what they went for was these fixed sentences with variable slots. So you can you can change the word wearing and the word party in this particular example. So, for, in the wearing slot, you can choose other words like training, buying, reading, etc. Um, and then once you've made all your selections, what are you wearing at the party? Um, you're presented with a video, which I'm not sure whether it'll work. It might do, actually. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, because it's a Mac, that's why it doesn't work. Well, anyway, this is some screenshots of the, um, of the video. And you can see that each word in the sentence is converted into a separate video, which, is, which are all combined together into one. Um, the various functional grammatical words like what, are, the, and at, which has got kind of generic videos that they use. And then the, the specific words, wearing and party, have got more more specific videos, and they're all merged together with a, with a soundtrack, which you can see on the, on the website. Okay, well, well, the outcome of the project, for the advertising agency, they said how it gave them an insight into the language of social media and allowed them to reflect the actual language used by the target audience more closely. And Marketing Magazine said that the overall campaign was innovative and a great interactive experience. The benefits to us and to the university have been, well, first of all, we used it as, a, as part of our impact case study for the REF, so that was quite useful. 
but it also helped us to understand our own subject more clearly because we found that explaining what we do to non-specialists helped us to clarify and emphasize the most important parts of what we do and not, not so much dumbing down but just simplifying and adapting to other people's requirements. And in the future, we're working on other, working with other advertising agencies through the university's Commercial Edge initiative. Okay, so it's basically it's designed to be a fun tool for use by young people, but there is some quite complex linguistic knowledge and expertise underpinning the system. Um, and you can give it a try yourself at pumadancedictionary.com. Thank you.